to hear about rumors of whatever. I mean, it just throws you in. And that's fucking horrible. Um, when you're telling... Yet another fact to her story is the fact that you never really care for the world or the game gives you no incentives whatsoever for pushing on. Damn right, that's why I'm quitting. Uh, why should anyone care what happens to this world? What is pushing me towards one choice or another? Nothing except for maybe biomod canisters, credits, or the joy of shooting things. Even when I thought that the main character was forming some kind of friendship with his old training school buddies, the game abruptly drops the past and takes you back to the moronic main story. Uh, issue the second. Consequences of your actions. Simply put, there aren't any. Forget what anyone might tell you about the consequences of your decisions. In this game, you can do anything you want and won't make a difference. There are three main factions in this game, and the fourth slightly less important faction. At any point in the game, up to the very last moment, you can switch sides into quests for any of them, and it won't make a difference in the end. Uh, when the true final decision comes about which faction you will indeed take over, uh, only then... Uh, only then what you do matters. But that does not make this game with many paths. It makes it just another game with different endings. For example, one of the side quests involves two competing coffee shops. At one point, one of the owner asks you to go and destroy the other guy's shipment. So I go to his snore, three th sneak through the standard air vent, and destroy his shipment. I go back to the guy that gave me the quest and get my reward. Then I go to the other guy whose shipment I just destroyed... And he's completely oblivious to what happened. He doesn't even mention the destroyed coffee. Instead, he gives me his own quest, which I complete and get another reward. There are many other similar examples, but who cares about mentioning them all? Rest assured that the whole game is pretty much like that. You can do anything you want for any faction, and things will still remain the same. Only one faction asks you to kill something. Uh, only if one faction asks you to kill someone and another asks you to help that someone, you might get a conflict, but other than that, you can do whatever you like, and no fear of botching things up. You can't botch things up anyway, because the people that give you the main quest contact you through the telecom, you don't meet the real people up until the end, so you don't try to kill any of them. So you can't try to kill anyone. Game graphics. The thing about the graphics in general for any game is that everyone can make good graphics. But not everyone can make good graphics that perform well. Deus Ex Invisible War has been bragging about these dynamic lighting effects for the last three years, and the final result, they're more than a hassle and really impressive feature. Sure, they're nice to look at, but uh, to be really able to enjoy them, you need to get a top-of-the-line system. Okay, yeah, I have one, because this game is old. For us regular Joes, um, I mean a top-of-the-line system two years from now. For us regular Joes with our P4s, 1.8 GHz, and GeForce cards, the only good thing about the graphics is the 1.1 patch will allow you to turn off shadows completely, and thus give you the ability to use resolutions higher than 800 by 600. The other thing about the lighting system is that the developers know that it was highly inefficient. Because of this, they could not afford to put many lights in the environments, and so they didn't. But then they saw the environments were far too dark, and you couldn't see a foot in front of your face, so they found a genius solution. They give you this special modification that allows you to emit light. This line surrounds you and has a radius of about two feet. It casts no shadows and is completely static. It does not hurt game performance any further. The only problem with this is this bluish color. It colors everything around you blue. Not that the game itself has a lot of colors, but we'll talk about that later. This light works good about giving you an ability to see what you're walking through, but I found turning the gamma brightness way up works much better. Some people thought, uh, though, may say that darkness was intended effect to allow you stealth abilities. I will negate this idea in the next section. The game and the game world. First off, let's talk about the stealth aspect. There's no need to use stealth in this game. The enemies are weak up until the end, and you are strong. Their AI is stupid, and you know to aim for the head. If you happen to lose any firefights in this game, you'll either have some kind of vision problem, and you can't aim, or your mouse is broken, and you can't shoot. From the moment the enemy sees you, you have about five seconds until he gets his first shot off. He shoots straight and does uh, shoots straight and doesn't have very good aim, so you just strafe a little bit. You shouldn't get hit. Also, when the enemy has engaged you, they tend to just sit in one place and fire. So you get the gun, head level, and let it rip. There are ways to make the enemy stronger by increasing the difficulty level and editing the I and I files, but all these settings just change the damage dealt and received. They don't do anything about improving the AI. 
the game redeems itself in this aspect a little bit towards the end when it starts throwing these really tough enemies at you with one weak spot and then you need to use a little bit more strategy but even then with your trusty rocket launcher and ample supply of ammunition scattered around the map you should have no trouble taking them down a large issue that sort of eliminates the need to use any kind of strategy and planning is the f fact that resources are plentiful in the beginning the game is a little stingy with ammo and multi-tools used to compromise electronic equipment such as cameras and chest locks. It's a good thing metal keys are a thing of the past, but later they come in abundance. Uh, there were many instances in the game where I just couldn't carry any more of them because my inventory was full. Speaking of my inventory, the game is too poorly designed. That too is poorly designed. How can a flamethrower occupy the same space as a grenade? Uh, fortunately, multiples of the same objects uh, go in the same spot, but even then you still don't have enough slots for your basic equipment. I understand that you need to use the space wisely, but there are some items which are standard and you always need with you. You always need healing items and items to replenish your energy. You always need three to four different types of grenades that cover different fighting con uh, conditions, EMP, concussion, um, the light grenades, and uh, the scramblers. And you'll always need a few different types of weaponry because each of them has different uses. Sniper, rocket launcher, SMG, sword. For many different items I have, the more ways I can find to resolve a problem, but the game doesn't allow them. For example, I can kill a bot with a rocket launcher or other gun, but with an EMP grenade, or by using one of my special skills to disable it, I can use a rocket launcher. I can't use a rocket launcher because I don't want to waste ammo, even though there's plenty of it. I can't use the special skills because I'm out of energy and don't carry energy packs since I don't have room in my inventory. So I'm forced to use the MP grenades. So people might call this the intended strategy, but I call it a cheap trick to make the game harder. And ultimately limits the number of solutions to a given problem. As for the universal ammo is concerned, I don't mind it much. Actually, I kind of liked it. Um, there was a universal construction in the first game, so it does kind of follow the plot, uh, and I don't consider it significant enough to spend too much time on it like some other people did. The other side of the screen literally you have their bio mods. These are special abilities that your character can use, and they can be upgraded through bio mod canisters. There are 15 bio mods, 16 if you count the blue light we mentioned, and most of them are useless except for a very nice few. These few are bot domination, computer hacking, and spy drone, a little camera that delivers an EMP attack. The other biomods serve absolutely no purpose. Oh, I don't know about that. And they don't provide any real gameplay advantages. I don't know about that either. I think, uh... EMP weapon is pretty good. Um... It's overpowered, though. Since biomod canisters are fairly abundant, you can upgrade the above. Good biomods pretty early on, and because one powerful dude, which further results, reduces the need to use strategy. Um, in your gameplay. By the way, when I ended the game, I had about 13 onions biomod canisters in my inventory. The old Deus Ex skill and experience system has been removed. That would uh, not have been such a bad thing. The new system added anything to the gameplay, but it doesn't. In the current game, there is absolutely no incentive whatsoever to completing a quest. Some side quests give you credits, the game's money, or items, but both these things are too small and an encouragement to push you towards the end or the other. Uh, items, as I said before, are more abundant in the game world, uh, and credits are almost useless since there's no traders in the game. Sure, there are some guys who will sell you a few small items now and then, but these items are items you found easily throughout the world, and there's no need for them. Credits can't really be used for any other purpose, though I think I did come a few instances where you could pay people money either for info or for them to do something. That's pretty much it. Either way, by the end of the game, I had enough money to buy a whole city, not that there was a lot of city to buy, but we'll talk about that later. Other small gameplay issues were the fact that you couldn't quick save load until patch 1.1. 1. 1. Oh my god, really? Uh, the fact that there are a lot of bugs. Uh, the fact that there are very frequent and long load times. Hell yeah, you saw that. And other things like that. And my computer. Like, I can't go on. This game was made like fucking 10 years ago. My computer is amazing. I can play like Bioshock 2 on high settings or Deus Ex fucking 3 on high settings. I I mean, you'll see when I play Deus Ex 3, I can play that on maximum. Like, I can turn everything up and it runs smoothly. And this is Deus Ex 2 from 10 years ago and the load times take forever. 
I mean, when I played Half-Life, the load times were instantaneous. Like, they didn't even make me wait half the time. Maybe two seconds. Um, the game world can be easily described with three adjectives. Ugly, dark, and small. Ugly because all the textures are either some shade of gray or some shade of ugly brown. Or blue fuse that little light we mentioned. I fixed the textures in my Let's Play, so... I realize this is supposed to be bleak and distressful future, but come on, you can be a little more imaginative than that. So I didn't get the ugly world. I got a, a pretty world, but not that that made a difference. The game is dark, as we described above, and will seriously hurt your eyes unless you pump up the gamma and brightness. Finally, the world is small. All the environments in this game are so small and confined that you never really get a feeling that you're visiting these locations. Even outdoor locales feel like they're inside a building. I never realized Seattle helped me. had one suites building with three apartments, one bar, one coffee shop, one coffee stand, one metro train with no station, only one stop, one apartment building with only two apartments, and one sleazy tavern. By the way, each of these locations is a separate load. Inhabiting these locales is a very small number of people who must wander around in a circle, don't have any real personality. Oh, and one big elevator. It's a little hard to describe the confined feeling you get inside this world, but rest assured that it pales in comparison to large maps in the first day of sex. A match which took a day to learn. And it's certainly no match for worlds in other games, such as Knights of the Old Republic, which you really get the feeling the world is alive. Should I play KOTOR? Maybe you should play those. I don't know. There's so many better games I could play. The conclusion. Forget everything I just said. The only thing that really matters when judging the game is whether or not it will give you the player an enjoyable experience. Uh, whether it was fun and satisfying. So the question is, despite what I said so far, do you love? did I love or hate the game? The answer is neither. I didn't care for the game. I was very hopeful about this game since I enjoyed the first day of sex very much, but this kind of let me down from the get-go. From the beginning, I started to dislike it, but my dislike quickly vanished and soon just stopped caring. Didn't care for the world, didn't care for any of the events and factions in it, didn't care for the main character, didn't care what happened, and the opinion that the worst fate of the game is that it's always better to install some emotion in the player than no emotion at all. But, uh, this game barely tried. Towards the end, it started to get a little interesting, but the fighting was becoming a little challenging, if you ask me. It was a little too late. Uh, seemed like developers just didn't care about this title. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, the dragon's two swords sucked. Um, let me think of this one. Game being ridiculously short. Areas feel too crammed. Universal ammo. I mean, come on, the sniper rifle, shot, he took up a whole clip after like three shots, and didn't even use the shotgun secondary. Crappy use of biomods, I'll say the only useful ones are health regen, hacking, dom, and invisible to the bots. Even then, you don't really need them. Uh, still shouldn't have put an area where a toxic biomod is a must-have. Um, Alex D, no real personality like JC Denton had, even on realistic. The game is way too easy. Uh, not really, but Leo Jawatsky could have been more of a badass. He got wiped out in under a minute using the crappy flamethrower against the commandos. Um, whatever, just in case. Yeah, um. Pequods is broken. Two things that bother me. Share amount of load screens and uh and why is it so much larger than why do they get rid of experience points? Universal ammo, um, blah blah blah. Why is hacking an AUG? Totally agree, everything blah blah blah, okay. Well, if you're still listening, then nobody's still listening. Um, anyway, where is this thing? Okay, lots and lots of rants. Um, anyway, this game is terrible. I'm not going to be finishing it. I will be starting up Deus Ex 3 as soon as I can get my hands on it, and, uh, 
that's that.